And remember, Iowa Barnstormers football follows on the flagship station, AM 1700. Play-by-play -play voice Larry Kotler will have the call. Iowa Barnstormers taking on Spokane tonight. Bennigan's Grill and Tavern connected to the Des Moines Airport is the place to watch the game watch parties for the Iowa Barnstormers when they're on the road this season. Let's get out to it. He's one of our great affiliates, KWAY AM 1470 in Waverly. The play-by-play -play voice, Tim Hillebrand, joins us tonight. Tim, uh, sorry about the delay, but... Uh, Boy, what a great uh, winter sports season, and boy, the Gohawks gave you a lot to cheer about this year. You know, guys, they really did. I, it was just a tremendous season uh, with the wrestling program doing what they do every single year, it seems like, winning their fourth state title. Our, our Gohawk boy basketball team really came through for us as well, and obviously bumping in uh, to uh, the Iowa Sports Connection down at the Wells Fargo Arena was a fun time, and Make it to the championship game was was a good run for Waverly Shell Rock boys. Came up three points short of a championship, but uh, was a tremendous season, and, and we really enjoyed ourselves coming to the capital city. I'll tell you one thing, Connor Coleman. Uh, if nobody knew about him, they know about him now because this Waverly Shell Rock team was kind of strange to look for on paper. If you hadn't seen them, very balanced attack, uh, a lot of unselfishness. Everybody knowing their roles, but I think Connor Coleman kind of uh, put a little emphasis on his game and uh, showed the kind of point guard he is and team leader. Yeah, this team is the example of what a team is. It's a lot of guys do a lot of different little things. But Connor is definitely our, our key player. You can tell when you watch the game, both the overtime game on the Thursday night uh, win over Norwalk for Waverly Shell Rock, and then in that tight contest in the championship game against Healing, uh, Connor is the kid that we kind of look to. You could just sense the balls in his hands, and he's the guy that's going to make something happen, either through dribble driving, uh, drawing defenders and penetrating and dishing off and or shooting up and hitting a three. And uh, he, he's got a lot of talent, and he looks uh, not to be a basketball player. If you bumped into him in the hallway at a high school, you wouldn't think that this guy is your stud basketball player. He's got a lot of hair up on top of his noggin, <laughs> and uh, he's not the most muscular kid, but he's got long arms, and he's got basketball savvy, and sometimes that can go a long way. Well, his passing abilities is unique. It's quick release. It's snap. It's got more like a snap to it. Uh, if you're a teammate, you better be prepared for the pass. But I got to say this: in that Norwalk game, and Coach Chris Larson, the head coach of Norwalk, said it was one of the greatest play calls and one of the greatest executed plays because you can practice that without knowing you're going to practice that play and never execute it the way Waverly did. And that was that alley oop dunk to win the game. Yeah, in our post game, our head coach Nate Stegi, who made that gutsy call. Uh, I, the only thing I could tell him really was or said to him was is that's a legend maker because it, it was the moment. I mean, you're at the state tournament, you're down one, uh, 10 seconds or so to play, and to make that call took a lot of guts. And that is a play that actually uh, former Waverly Shell Rock head coach Tom Bardall, who's at Cedar Falls right now and has coached at UNI and Iowa State, he brought that to Waverly Shell Rock in 06 when he took over his first year at WSR. And so we've run that play quite a bit on and off throughout the season. And so that, that kind of is a little history of why it was something that we could run so smoothly. But it's a difficult play to run. There's no doubt about it. There's so much timing that has to come to, to be perfect for that to come through. Uh, but, but we've done it probably three or four times this year at certain spots. It's tougher to do it in conference. Conference understands what we do sometimes. But what a moment to pull out a play like that. That is one that I think many basketball fans will talk about for many, many years. Yeah, that was uh, one of those uh, Class 3A uh, semifinal nights that a lot of the fans who paid a ticket to get into the Wells Fargo Arena will never forget. <laughs> both games went into overtime, and mm -hmm. both had some crazy finishes to them. Yeah, it was a great night. I stuck around, obviously, to scout the winner of the next game, knowing we were going to play them in the championship game. And that game was just unbelievable as well with Heelan and Mount Pleasant. Two very good ball clubs. I mean, if you get to the state tourney, you kind of figure you're going to have good games. And that night was an uh, unforgettable night with two very closely contested games going to OT and, and four very good basketball teams playing in 3-8 that night. Well, I'll tell you one thing. My boss is a Bishop Peelan and Crusaders. sons went <laughs> there, and uh, he remembered the pasting that Waverly Shellrock gave to him during the state championship <laughs> run a few years back. So it was kind of redemption, but, boy, they had to earn it. well-earned 3-8 title game this year. Yeah, you know, it, down the stretch, I mean, we got that second quarter was tough for Waverly Shell Rock, and Healing was making their shots. And uh, third quarter, it seemed like we'd get down to six, they'd push it back to ten. We'd get down to six, they'd push it back to ten. And many of us, uh, your listeners who know sports and, and, and we who have done games, know that you try so hard to get even that by the time you catch your breath, they come and pull away from you again. But the Gohawks were able to keep fighting and, 
when they got it down to one point, and uh, it, it was we had hope, and it came right down to the wire. So uh, it was an exciting game by uh, by all accounts, and so Healing got us this time, and now we split a championship game, and I guess that seems fair. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and there's a chance that who knows the way 3A looks next year, you might be seeing each other again. We'll find yeah. out. Well, Tim, it's been great being part of this, and I know during the spring and summer we'll keep up with you. A lot going on with track and field and soccer and golf, and then, of course, into softball and baseball season. So we'll keep up with you and catch up with you down the road, and we appreciate you being one of our great affiliates on the Iowa Sports Connection Radio Thanks Network. Thanks so much. You guys have a great show. Bye oh. now. Thank you. Tim Hillebrand of KWAY, AM 1470 in Waverly. And before we go, i got, what, got about a minute? Minute and a half. Okay. About, about, I'm going to give you your 30 seconds because you forgot somebody about the Drake relays. And <laughs> if you forget this person, uh, it's, it, you know, it's almost like holy grail. So talk about your experiences at Drake and who you want to discuss you forgot about talking about. Well, got, I'll give you a little picture. So you walk up to Drake Stadium and... You're about to it, and all of a sudden you hear this announcer come on, and you instantly get butterflies. That would be Mike J., the best announcer ever. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody who's been to Drake, and right when they get to that final turn, he brings them home, too. Oh, yeah. And I know the athletes have all said they they hear that roar, and Mike and, he, and, and Mike J. is one of the reasons. I mean, he, is, he, he gets that crowd going, and he's... He understands track. Mm -hmm. He knows when it's right time to do things. And, boy, the fans at Drake are still outstanding, though. I mean, the, yeah. the energy that's developed there. So it'll be fun. Oh, I'm excited. Hope you had fun tonight, Alex. I had a blast. We Thank you. I appreciate you coming on. It was a lot of fun talking to you. That's Alex Gokenauer. For producer Ben Carroll and for the TV side, Aaron Gurness, I'm Tony Anceni. In for Mike Ricker tonight, we'd like to say thanks for listening to the spring into summer edition of Friday Night Live on the Iowa Sports Connection radio and television network. We hope you join us each and every Friday night for more. Again, be positive, be competitive, be a good sport, pursue victory with honor, and God bless America.